Have you ever wondered what the heck a circulatory system is? I haven't either, but too bad. You both need to know this very great, so... I'm going to be discussing this, 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 and all these. So sit tight, listen to me boringly explain to you what the heck a circulatory system is. Starting with... Functions of the peripheral circulation. This is a pretty simple one. <clears throat> Take a look at all this! Just kidding, that's not what this is. What peripheral circulation really is, is that it functions to carry blood, exchange nutrients and gases, transport hormones, regulate blood pressure, and direct blood flow. On to the next one. General features of blood vessel structure. Blood is pumped from the heart through elastic arteries, muscular arteries, and areolus to the capillaries. The blood then returns to the heart from the capillaries through venules, small veins, and large veins. So it's kind of like getting a letter from your dear old granny and sending her a letter of your own. Blood vessels have three layers, except for capillaries and venules. The tunica intima, the tunica media, and the outer adventitia, all of which contain various different cell stuff. Arteries and veins. What's the difference? The difference between arteries and veins is that arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart to the body, and veins carry oxygen-poor blood back from the body to the heart. So basically, it's refurbishing the bad blood to the heart. Where do veins get all this blood? A pretty mediocre distributor, most definitely. But really, it gets it from the capillaries. Capillaries are tiny, thin-walled vessels which form a network to take blood through the organs and tissues. Next topic. Blood vessels of the pulmonary circulation. Blood goes from the right vertical to the lungs, and from the lungs, via four pulmonary veins, newly oxygenated blood to the left atrium. Fresh oxygen right from Mother Nature. Blood pressure is a measure of the force the blood puts on the blood vessel walls. Blood pressure fluctuates between 1200 millimeters of mercury, systolic, and 80 millimeters of mercury, dialistic, in the aorta. If constriction of blood vessels occurs, resistance to the blood flow increases, and blood flow decreases. For the next two topics, we will be discussing the two processes of systemic circulation. One for the arteries, and the other for veins. Blood vessels of the systemic circulation, arteries... Before I spit out random anatomy terms at you folks, I want you to jot down these directional vocabulary words into your heads, because this stuff is pretty confusing. Okay? Okay. Anterior means the front of the body, posterior means the opposite, superior means towards the sky, and inferior means towards Hades Funhouse. There's more, but only these terms will be important for this video and presentation. I'm sure your teacher over there will teach you the rest. Now that we have that out of the way, on to the actual topic. The aorta is the main artery of the body, supplying oxygenated blood to the circulatory system. For the head and neck, we have the branchiocephalic artery, which pretty much flows blood into the entire head, plus the right arm, and the common carotid that branch off into two different carotids, which supply the face and mouth and brain. Upper limbs have a truck ton of arteries. Just look at that! Goodness! I'm not even going to begin on the thoracic and abdominal artists and their branches. Just know they have something to do with supplying organs, parietal branches, and the walls. For the sake of this video, I'm only going to say that the subclavian artery continues as the axillary artery, then the brachial artery, which branches from the radial and ulnar arteries. So many arteries. Pelvises! Branches of the uh, internal iliac arteries supply them. That, that's all you need to know. I'm not going to give you that talk. Finally, for the topic for arteries, we have the iliac arteries. And fun fact, but not really, iliac means of or relating to the ilium, or the nearby regions of the lower body. So connect the dots yourself on what all of these do. Blood vessels of the systemic circulation, veins. More systemic circulation. Yay! There are two vena cavas in your body right now. Also, don't question these anatomy terms. I didn't write them. First, we have the superior vena cava, which drains your upper body of blood, and the inferior vena cava that drains the other part of your body. So sad. Your body steals from itself. Let's be a bit more specific. The internal jugular veins drain blood from the front of the head and neck i.e. anterior head and neck. The external jugular veins do the same thing, except with the posterior head and neck. 
I forgot to mention, superficial means close to the surface of the body, and deep means the opposite. With that, superficial veins are these things, and deep veins are these things. Veins in the thorax return to the previously mentioned super vacuna cavata. Veins from kidneys, glands, gonads, and all other middle body organs go right into the inferior vena cava, i.e. your abdomen and pelvis. The Physiology of Circulation What in Sam's Hill is physiology, Mr. Weird Screen Guy? Well, in case you weren't paying attention in class, it's the part of biology that focuses on how things in a living organism works. Put the pieces together, we're going to be talking about how circulation works. We already went over blood pressure being measured by the force on the blood vessel's wall. We must also talk about pulse pressure. It's the difference between systolic and diastolic pressure. Systolic referring to the amount of pressure in your heart during contraction of your heart muscle, and diastolic referring to your blood pressure when your heart muscle is in between beats. A pulse can also be detected when large arteries are superficial, which is near the surface of the body in case you forgot. Also, most exchange across the wall of capillary is by diffusion, not by the splitting of two rocks diffusion, but spreading more widely diffusion. Local control of blood vessels. Blood flow through tissue is usually proportional to the metabolic needs of the tissue and is controlled by the precapillary sphincters. That's it. <laughs> the nervous control of blood vessels. Nervous control of blood vessels is carried out primarily through the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. The vasomotor center are in areas of the lower pons and upper medulla oblongata. <sighs> I swear these names. It also continually transmits a low frequency of action potentials to the sympathetic vasoconstrictor fibers. I swear. Okay, sorry. These names. Vasomotor tone! It isn't music, but it is the amount of tension in the smooth muscle inside the walls of the blood vessels. Aren't you glad to hear the word wall so many times? I sure am. Anyway, if the vasomotor tone increases, it constricts blood vessels more and blood pressure increases. If the tone decreases, blood vessels expand and the blood pressure decreases. Nervous control of blood vessels also acts like a delivery service. It pulls blood from one large area of the body to another. So you can take it from here to here, here to here, and from here to here. If your body takes intense physical damage, that is. Like being blown up! Regulation of arterial pressure. We're almost done here, dudes, gals, and others. Just this topic and one more after. Please, bear with me. We gotta cover two reflexes. <clears throat> Barrel receptor reflexes! Barrel receptors are sensory receptors located in the carotid sinuses in the aortic arc that are sensitive to stretch. It also changes peripheral resistance, heart rate, and stroke volume in response to changes in blood pressure. The other reflexy reflexes are chemoreceptor reflexes. Chemoreceptors are located in the keratid bodies and the aortic bodies, and are sensitive to changes in blood oxygen, carbon dioxide, and pH. It as well increases peripheral resistance in response to low oxygen levels, high carbon dioxide levels, and reduced blood pH. So if you aren't breathing, your chemoreceptors are like, Yo, we need oxygen, dude. Get some. I tried, but I'm just guy. <laughs> now let's talk about hormonal mechanisms. First, epinephrine released from the adrenal medulla as a result of sympathetic stimulation increases heart rate, stroke volume, and vasoconstriction. Renin is released by the kidneys in response to low blood pressure. Renin promotes angiotensin 2 because screw angiotensin 1. It can't cause vasoconstriction and an increase in allosterone secretion like angiotensin 2 does. Let's talk about pee, you oversized middle schoolers. Aldosterone reduces urine output, but ADH reduces that urine output. Atrial natriuretic hormone is released from the heart when atrial blood pressure increases. It stimulates an increase in urine production, causing a decrease in blood volume and blood pressure. In terms of short-term and long-term regulation, Baroreceptor mechanisms are most important for short-term blood regulation, while hormonal mechanisms that I just talked about are more important for long-term regulation. Okay, last one, I promise. Let's get right into it. Reduced elasticity and thickening of arterial walls result in hypertension and reduced ability to respond to changes in blood pressure. 
This is known as atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is an age-related condition, so are thrombi, emboli, varicose veins, and hemorrhoids. But I'm not going to talk about those today, or ever. Atherosclerosis as well increases restriction of blood flow because of the plague surrounding the vessel wall. There is also a decrease in the efficiency of capillary exchange, and walls of veins thicken in some areas and dilate in others. In case my science talk confuses you, basically, what atherosclerosis is, is that it strains your arteries and veins as you age, filling them with muck, making it so blood has a harder time going through your body, failing to reach certain body parts, making you more fragile and inefficient in life physically, you can't open a plain jar or a bottle, no more afternoon jogs or amusement park rides, you can only ride low-end jobs, and you contemplate on your life choices and ask yourself, was this all really worth it? And you ask the same question every day of your life until your inevitable death. But hey, that's just your circulatory system getting a wee bit old. Nothing too drastic. Anyways, I'm done. My sources are... over there? Those textbooks. Yeah, them. Thanks for sitting through my dumb video. Goodbye and take care.